Chapter Two of Adventures of the Teeny Weenies. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Adventures of the Teeny Weenies by William Donahue. Chapter Two, The Easter Egg. Humpty Dumpty sat on a hill. Humpty Dumpty had a great spill. All the teenies, ladies and men, can't put Humpty Dumpty together again. Rufus Rhyme, Teeny Weeny Poet. Well, madam, said the general, lifting his hat and bowing politely to the old hen who lived near the shoe house, will it be possible for you to furnish the teeny weenies with an egg for their Easter dinner this year? Why, yes, of course, snapped the old hen. Ain't I always ready to lay an egg when I gets my pay? Dear me, whispered the lady of fashion to the doctor, did you ever in all your life hear such bad grammar? "'How much will you charge us?' asked the general, as he sat down on a pebble. Twenty-five grains of corn,' answered the hen, glaring about at the teeny-weenies. "'Great guns!' exclaimed the general. "'Why, that's five bags, and last year we paid you only three. "'Things are awfully high now, and worms are scarce. "'Well, all right. You can have an egg for twenty grains of corn, and not one grain less,' cried the old hen. "'That's pretty expensive,' said the general. "'But it wouldn't seem like Easter if we didn't have a boiled egg. "'So I'll take it, and we'll bring over the corn in the morning and get the egg.' "'The next morning the little folks filled four teeny-weeny bags with corn. Five grains were put into each bag, "'and it was about all a teeny-weeny could do to carry it. "'When the teeny-weenies arrived at the hen's house, "'they opened the bags and poured the corn out on the ground, "'so the old hen could count them.' for she was a business-like old lady, and wanted to be sure that she was getting her full amount of corn. "'I'm not afraid you'll cheat me,' she said, "'but anyone is liable to make a mistake, and I always believe in being careful in a business deal.' "'That's right, that's right,' said a big rooster with a huge double chin, who strutted up to the hen-house. "'You can't be too careful when it's a matter of business.' "'How are you going to get the egg home?' asked the old hen. "'Oh, we can roll it very nicely,' answered the general. "'Well, I was just going to say that I couldn't deliver it at the low price of twenty grains of corn,' cackled the hen. "'Give me ten grains more, and I'll walk over to the shoe-house and lay it anywhere you say.' "'It isn't far, and we can roll it easily,' answered the general. "'Well, clear out and give me a little time, and I'll lay the egg for you,' said the hen." "'You don't think I can lay an egg with all you folks standing around here staring, do you?' The teeny-weenies retired to the other end of the chicken-yard, where they sat down on several corn-cobs to wait. Presently the old hen announced the laying of the egg with loud cackles, and the little folks started at once to roll the egg home. It was easy work rolling the egg over the level ground, but when the teeny-weenies came to a steep hill that lay in their path, they found that it would be necessary to use ropes in order to let it down safely. The little fellows rolled the egg up to the edge of the hill, while the Turk made the ropes ready to handle the heavy load. Suddenly a puff of wind struck the egg, and it rolled over the edge of the hill. The cook and Gogo tried to catch it, but they were too late, and the egg and the two teeny-weenies tumbled down the hill. The policeman, who was standing below, just had time to fall out of the way as the egg and the cook rolled past him and smashed up against an old birch. The cook was able to save a great deal of the broken egg, which he dipped up into many wash-tubs and thimbles. The teeny-weenies went to bed that night with heavy hearts, for they knew that it would be quite impossible to buy another egg at such high prices. Easter morning, Shoehurst was filled with the greatest excitement for on the ground in front of the house lay a fine big egg. Most of the teeny-weenies thought the Easter rabbit had left the egg, but they were greatly mistaken, for the old hen, who was really a kind-hearted old lady in spite of her gruff manner, had heard of the broken egg, and, feeling sorry for the little people, had slipped over early in the morning and laid the egg herself. End of chapter 2 Read by Kara Schallenberg, www.kray.org, on Sunday, September 22, 2013, in San Diego, California.